Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I will have to play with my distress inks. If you don't know what they are, those are ink pads. Let me show you one of them. Those are in a lot of different colors. As you can see, those are my yellow orangey tones. I have a lot of those little yeah, containers to store them in. I have them in blue, in green, in purple. I decided to go with those for today. Let's open up one. So it will open on me. And it is a simple ink pad. I have the mini ones. I know they are also in bigger ones. You can buy refills for them. I got one. And you open it and there is a dropper inside. And with a little dropper tool you can put it on the ink and refill your ink pad. So it will last you a very long time. You can use them on a lot of different ways and I love to have play with you and see what will work today and if there are some of the techniques we can apply in our coloring books because overall I'm a coloring channel and yeah it's always fun to find new techniques and things to try and test out right so first of all you can use the distressings with multiple tools you can buy some of those brushes this is a special one made for ink blending but i know you can buy on different websites makeup blending brushes and they do exactly the same thing and they are way cheaper i have two sizes it's enough for me but i know some of the you like to have a yellow one for the yellow ink, an orange one for orange ink, and yeah, that way you don't have to clean them. I clean them with a, a special soap that is also used for paint brushes. Work great. They are so soft after cleaning them, and yeah, it prevents the ink go mixing. And yeah, you have to wait until they are fully dried because you don't want to add water in your stamping pads, your ink pads, because then you will ruin them. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. I also have this tool. It's specially designed for those inks. And the best thing is that I store the pads inside the here yeah, containers the ink pads and I can place it on and if I've used it I can remove it store it underneath and I have one for every color so they don't get mixed up and yeah it works very well for me this way and using it you can just go over your page and really um, yeah, place your ink very easily, precise, that was the word I was looking for. So let's start and see how we can play with it and find some new ways to play with them. I also have a regular brush, this one is from the Action, a very cheap one, works great also. And I want to test something with it and see if it works out or if it don't. I also have this bottle, this mister. It's filled with water. You can spray it on your page to create some nice effects. And yeah, I might want to use this one also today. I have a regular water brush. So yeah, plenty of options today to play with. I have this stamping block a simple acrylic one that i want to use i also picked up my calendar's palette and we will use the very smooth side today i had a little bit of bubble wrap i don't know if it will work out but i have some crazy with it so 
let's get started right i'm rambling on for almost five minutes now so i picked up some sheets of white paper in this yeah a little thicker than copy paper nothing fancy i just ordered by amazon a cheap pack of yeah crafting paper so i hope it will work out and yeah see if there are techniques that are great so first of all i like to yeah, use well this color for the base of my page and i have always trouble opening them and that's nothing to do with inks it's all because of my hands so something to keep in mind and i have a little tissue paper to clean my brush in between the colors i simply rub it on and then you can start applying you can see it very softly right i create on the tongue This is the result with a little brush. Then I also like to show you with a tool. And you can see it's picking it up. And I barely use those. I always go for the brush and I don't know why. I don't like the sound of it. Also with this one, you can Slowly building it up. You can see it's a softer look than the brush. It takes more time. It's easier on your hands. So. Mm. Well, this one, that's okay. Let me see if we can blend some of the colors together. Very red tone. To create some effect. Well, yeah. Oh. I wanted to use it with a brush and I went in with a pet. I think I'm able to create a softer look with a brush and that's why I'm using it more often. So that's the difference that I wanted to show you. Now I also found out that we are able to use an acrylic look. Let me and the palette to pick up the ink. So I will stamp it on both of them and see if there's any difference. So, you have to yeah, wet it, add a little bit of water to get the effect that we want. I will use a regular paintbrush, just a cheap one. I will yeah, have to play with it and see if we are able to create something nice. For the background you can see it's a totally different look you can mix the colors oh this is working great yes i think we can even use a little bit more water to blend it out again, reactivating it a little. It's not really reacting again after it is dried. I also like to dry it on this one, and yeah, it's working exactly the same. I think it will work on every smooth surface, right? You can see the effect is different. It looks more like a watercolory 
substance this way, the result. Let me check the back of the page if it's going through. No, there's no going through with the water at all. And also, just with applying, I know sometimes I like to spray or mist or add some little drops. Are we on top of it? To create some extra stains or and those go through most of the time so I will let it sit in a little and have a look at the back if we have something bleeding through and it's not bleeding through so that's great good to know I like it normally I spray with water just regular water and now I've used the um, colored ink. Maybe this will go too. Those are bigger drops. Let's see. And my whole desk is splattered under the ink at the moment. Let some of it sit in. It will. Stay in the page and it don't. You can see nothing going through. So I had some very bad bleed throughs lately in my coloring books when I was adding too much water. So yeah, with the water brush this way it prevents going through. So that's great. Good to know. There are some effects that you are able to create with them. You can Use the stencils and you can get them very cheap. This is not a fancy one, this is just a very cheap one and there are different ways how you can apply them. I like to start with my lighter color, so oh, let me get them on straight. And I go on top. Oh. It's making an awful squeaking noise. It's sliding very easily, easy on it, and you can tape it down with a little bit of washi if you don't want to cut the stencil moved. I moved it a little. You can see. Remove it. Swatch it over to the next color. I have multiple, so it, sometimes it's easier to use multiples of them. They are in sets. Let me show you. They are arriving in sets like this. It's by Ranger Mini Ink Blending Foam. You can see I have one that is really messed up inside. I don't think I'm able to use this one, but... Yeah, I ordered it online, so I... If it was in the shop, I didn't pick out this package, right? So, yeah. And then going on top, let's see if we are able to create something nice. And you can see a very nice blend. Those were great with stencils. Do the brushes also be great with stencils? I don't know. Let me clean it off a little. First with the lightest color. And I use circular motions. And I dab the brush on it. Oh, I made the stain. It's okay. If I'm not able to clean, I have to uh, replace the wooden uh, part on my desk. It is just a loose uh, board on top of my class desk. Most of the times when I'm coloring on my own, I'm removing it and using my class desk. But with filming, it, it gives this 
clear this reflection and yeah. I have more control with it. I think I feel like with a brush it's softer. This one is not bad. Not bad at all. But yeah, I like the soft feel of it. And you can see the blend is yeah, it's more mixed. It's easier to blend and yeah, I like the result of it. That is something we can use. It's fun, it is. Yeah. So I was thinking we might want to add something to the bubble wrap and see if we can create a nice texture with it. You can apply it this way. I think it's easier to apply it directly on the bubble wrap. And I will just smear it on, stamp it on. Yeah, it's better. Then also the dark color. And then apply it on the paper and see how I like the result, if it will work out. And because I'm not using that much water, I think we can apply this technique also in our coloring book. And you can rinse it under the water and reuse it later after it dried. You will never want to add little bits of water in your ink pads because, yeah, you will damage it really badly. Let me reapply some of it. This way you will use more ink, I think, compared to the brushes. Because you will stamping on it and I was curious to see how it will work on top of the rest. I'm liking it, right? It's different. If you just add little bits on your page, you can use smaller areas just to stamp it this way and see the result of it. And you can also apply it in your bullet journal or any art journaling or collage pages or yeah, I think it's fun. I might want to add some water. Can we use it with a little brush and see if it will move? And have a look at the results. I can apply a little from the acrylic look also. I'm just in the mood to have a play and see if I find something interesting to use. So far I'm liking this stencil the most with a brush and yeah. Let me add this one on top. It's not really working. It's making a big mess you can see. Let me move this one out of the way. And try it again. There's still some ink on it, and yeah, the water is not really a great idea. So we find out. Don't use water on it. Just use the stamping method onto the bubble wrap. Think it's very fun. So if you don't have any stencils, you can use any yeah you find in your house. This one I got to send out some of the books, some coloring books. Those are arrived in packages with color pencils. Oh, the back feels different. Can we use the back also? Sorry, I was distracted. Let's see if we create some different texture with the back of it. Oh yeah, you can see it is different. Do I like it more? No, not sure. Can I apply a little water maybe? Let's apply. The thing I found out is we can yeah use 
the ink in a coloring book, applying it at this palette. I mean, I really like the watercolor look from it this way. And we can uh, use it as a base layer, right? Because if it's dry, it's not really dry. We might want to go on top with some pencil. I have a white one next to me. So let's see. Yeah, it will go on top. Maybe white is not the best color to use. And with a brush, it's also working. So you can color on top of it. No problem. So yeah, we definitely can use it as a base layer in our color on our coloring pages. There's no resistance between it. There is just so much fun. This technique I also use with the neo colors at the other side of the palette, right? So yeah, it's fun to find a new medium that can do the same thing, and this way you can really decide for yourself what's the most a uh, usable product for me. Do I really need my Neo Colors? If I also can create the effect with this one. Do I like this more? You can create different looks with the same product and having a little different tool is much cheaper in the end. And yeah, really versatile. So I hope you enjoy this little play. I'm sure I will play a lot more with inks. I'm getting more and more excited about them every time that I have a play with them. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what is your favorite way to play with these Stratus inks. I'm really curious about it. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!